Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. Today I'm going to talk about how your attitude affects your relationship. So stay tuned. All right, family, thank you so much for coming back. So your attitude, how does it affect your relationship, either positive or negative? I'm just giving you 10 things to actually think about. And if it stirs up some emotion in you, then you can think about changing your ways. All right. So according to the um, American Psychological Association, they surveyed 2000 heterosexual couples, um, middle age couples actually, and they ask questions about the couple's health, happiness, and their activity level. What they found was the respondents that were the happiest actually had the better health that were in the relationships together, obviously. So just keep that in mind. Your happiness absolutely affects your relationship, which again is your attitude happiness absolutely is a choice if you don't believe me i have that video and i will link it up here so go ahead and check it out um after this video though okay <laughs> all right so the first thing to think about is when you are happier have a positive attitude it is much harder for you to actually harbor resentment and um, anger towards your partner. If you are more positive, if you are just a more positive person, then you actually want to engage in conversation and love making and kissing and holding affection and all of that stuff with your partner. So it's just harder for you to harbor those ill wills, um, ill will and bad feelings toward your partner when you have a much more happier attitude, i.e. positive attitude. Another thing that you could do is you have to make a conscious decision to notice all of the things that you love about your partner. Because when you get into a relationship, there are absolutely going to be things that just bug the crap out of you about your partner, what, what they do. It might even be how they chew, how they walk, <laughs> how they laugh. Um, there is going to be something that nags you about your partner. So you have to really focus on and bring those positive feelings into what you feel about and, and what you discover and how you love um, the things about your partner. So you have to make a conscious decision to focus on the positive or the things that you love about your partner. Again, that's going to bring the positive, happy attitude for you. So when you see your partner, you will absolutely light up every time that you see them, even if you don't verbally say, oh my God, there's my boo or whatever. But whenever they come in the room, you're like, hey, how you doing? Or, you know, whatever it is, there's that light, happy-go-lucky, even some butterflies in your stomach is going to come around because you have... Um, thought about what you love about your partner and continuously brought the positive, happy attitude in your relationship. You're making a conscious decision to do this because it's not always easy to do. <laughs> the third thing to think about is to be grateful in general, but specifically here, be grateful for all of the big and the little things that your partner or spouse does for you. I recently read, um, Somewhere, I have no idea. But I recently read how some men walk away, they pull away, they turn away from their spouse when the little things are not celebrated. And so you're there when it's the big celebrations, but like the things that he really is um, into, you're not celebrating those things with him. And I have an example. <laughs> um, the other day, my husband, he got like a, a high score or he um, reached a different level in one of his uh, games that he plays. And <laughs> he was kind of running around and giving himself a little applause and everything, right? And so I was like, yeah, high five, good job, or something like, I don't know what, what words I actually use. But he was happy that I participated in his small victory. Is it something that I necessarily care about no but i care about him caring about him reaching that next level and just doing really good in his game so i gave him a high five and he continued to dance around and he was happy but anyway so i just read in the article it's not just the big things that 
people want you to celebrate. In the article, that was specifically talking about men, but I'm going to say people in general don't only want you to celebrate the small things. We all want you to be a part of the, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the big things. We all want you to be a part of the small things as well, because if it's important to me, it should be important to you, at least enough, because it's me who's thinking that it is important. So just keep that in mind. It's not only the big things, it is absolutely the small things as well that you need to celebrate with your partner. The fourth thing to think about, it kind of goes in hand in hand with the third thing, which is again to you're thinking about, um, excuse me, you're being grateful for the big and small things. And number three, this one, number four, you are actually going to celebrate now the big and small things. And I just gave you the example of about my husband, <laughs> but um, I'm sure that there can be any other example that you can specifically think about in your own relationship, which you could be celebrating. And just don't let those moments pass by because most of the time those moments are not going to repeat themselves and even if they do or if you try to bring it up later it's just not the same so in the moment when you recognize it just you know give a high five dance around with them whatever it is that they're doing celebrate with them just as well <laughs> as you would want them to celebrate with you on the small as well as the big things as well the fifth one i really love and i need to start incorporating this more um so what they're saying is that you sh you and your spouse should tell each other every night three things that they did good or that you appreciated from them and um me and my husband we do this but we don't do it on a consistent basis and we definitely don't do it before bed just because we go to bed at different times so um but this is a good practice to incorporate on a consistent basis and i need to i even need to personally get this up on a consistent basis because we do it just not consistently okay so three things that you that that were good that you felt were good that you want to express to them that day that's also going to help you guys stay close together it's going to increase your love for one another and the connection that you guys have with one another as well and you're going to feel good about doing it and you're also going to feel good about receiving the three things that your spouse is going to tell you about you as well and it'll also give you that encouragement to do even more to do better and it's not just you it's also your spouse as well they will be encouraged to do even more for you just so they can get those accolades later on trust me it works your attitude number six also shifts your mood whether it's good or bad so just think about the times that your spouse or even you have gone into the house and um let's 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 go with your spouse okay so say for instance you were in the house you were in a happy-go-lucky mood you were ready to see them right but when they came in the house they had this bad attitude for whatever reason maybe it had nothing to do with you maybe it did have something to do with you but the point is when they came in the house you were happy-go-lucky but your mood shifted and you kind of got on their wavelength their scale and your mood went down it shifted and and just just Think about for the good part. When you're when you're good, you're good, and your partner comes in and they're good. Everything is good all together. So just try to make sure that you understand that your attitude will actually shift the mood, whether good or bad. It's a conscious thing as well to remember that even if you're having a bad day, you don't have to bring that bad day home to your spouse. You can kind of hold some of those things in, celebrate what's going on, be happy-go-lucky with your spouse in the moment, and then talk about what you need to talk about as far as what's bothering you. There are ways for you to be able to express these things and get them out without bringing down the atmosphere, without bringing down the environment to this negative um negative environment when, when your spouse was happy-go-lucky happy and excited to see you and even you know maybe even trying to greet you and you kind of stiff or like mm, leave me alone or they just getting those moody vibes from you when you walk in a room like oh boy can't say nothing today or um oh boy let me just let me just be quiet and let them do whatever they need to do and when they start talking to me then i'll talk but um you don't want that mood to affect especially when you're in a good mood so your attitude can affect and shift the mood number seven positive attitudes help you cope better with everyday life i am i am naturally an optimistic positive person and i could pick up pretty much instantaneously when somebody is being pessimistic or if they're being negative and i try my best to kind of 
I, I kind of do try my best to make them flip or at least make them think that it's not as bad as they're making the situation out to be. Or I'll say something like positive thinking or, you know, whatever, something like that, just to let you know what you're saying is not the best. And what we think about is really the world that we create. So if you think something is bad or if you are the pessimistic person that sees the bad in pretty much everything, even when it's a positive environment, you are the one to pick out and say, uh, well, you know, X, Y, and Z could happen. If you are that person, you need to reel that in <laughs> and, and because what you see and what you concentrate on and what you think about is absolutely the world that you will continuously see all around you. The eighth thing is your attitude is the prism in which people see you. So this is basically saying that you could pull people towards you with your attitude or you could push them away with your attitude. So the good attitude is usually the attitude that is going to pull more people towards you, especially your spouse, right? I kind of kind of mentioned this before, but not in this um, way. And then also you can push your spouse away or anybody else away with the negative attitude. So your attitude is the prism in which people see you or view you. The ninth thing about your attitude. So you cannot control what actually happens to you, but you can control how you react to say a thing happening to you. This is just life. Life is not always going to go the way that we think that it should or the way that we feel that it should, the way that we think that we deserve that it should. And so because of that, there's pretty much nothing that you can do. Even if it's something that um, your spouse that's saying something negative to you or in a bad way, the way that, what they're saying, the way that they're saying it to you is coming out just horribly, you don't have to participate in that. You could be the bigger person and step back from the situation before it goes all the way downhill. Because as soon as it goes all the way downhill, you're regretting what you're saying. Your spouse might even be regretting what they're saying to you, but neither one of you is um, going to let the other person see you sweat. Or you're not going to say, I'm sorry first. Just because. Just because you want to be stubborn. So you can't control what people do to you or say to you, which you can retro, but you can control how you react to said thing. That's a part of your attitude. Number 10 to think about is that your attitude is not a, in a fixed state. You have the power to change and control your attitude. Absolutely. So again, if you are in a crappy i.e. shitty attitude, if, <laughs> you have the power to change that. Only you have the power to change that. Yeah, your partner can try to cheer you up and make you laugh and stuff, but at the end of the day, it's really a choice in you having a more positive attitude versus a negative one. And now I'm going to read um, a statement from Robert Merton, which is a sociologist. Um, he describes a mental state in which your thoughts and attitudes can translate into actions, a self-fulfilling pro um, prophecy. By thinking negatively, you, apt to, you are apt to feel the negative predictions of the future. If you believe that you will never find a girlfriend, this may weigh on your self-esteem. You may feel less apt to attend functions, which limits your likelihood of meeting people thus fulfilling the expectation that you will not find a girlfriend. So it's all about your thoughts and your attitude and really you have the power to change if you want to. So family, what are your thoughts about this type of video? I would definitely love to hear them. Go ahead and put some um, comments down in the comment section below because you guys know that I love reading your comments. This is not a monologue. This is absolutely a dialogue. So I absolutely want to hear what you guys have to say. If this is your very first time to I Love Me 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 or you have been coming here for for a while now but you have yet to hit the red subscribe button i would love for you to be part of the family team i love me me, me because here at i love me, me me i'm sharing the tips and tools in order to have happy healthy romantic relationships so we can all of us together can decrease the divorce rate by simultaneously increasing the marriage rate i will see you again in the future deuces